Can you turn Mac OS into a tiling window experience? And if so, is it any good? Is it better than the window managers on Linux? We're gonna find all of that out here on this video, but first, before we do that, if you make it to the end of this video and you do like this video, consider hitting that like button because it helps out the channel way more than you know. So the device in question is an M1 MacBook Air. Now it is a few years old, it's not the new M2 line, but that's all right because the sole purpose that I bought this MacBook for is video editing and being able to use DaVinci Resolve. Now I know you might be asking or saying or screaming, but wait a minute, you can use DaVinci Resolve on Linux. And that is very true if you have an AMD or a Nvidia graphics card. I do not have either of those. All I've got is a little Dell laptop that's running Arch, and it's just got one of those little iGPUs in it, so it's not going, it, it, it doesn't work. You can install DaVinci Resolve, but I can't run it. So even though I got this MacBook just for video editing, that doesn't mean that that's going to stop me from diving headfirst into trying to tweak and customize Mac OS as much as possible. We all know that Apple devices are, they're walled off, right? They're pretty locked down, and they are designed and created to be used in a specific manner. Literally, anyone using a MacBook is probably using it in the same way as the next person. There's just no individuality, right? Being someone that is coming from Linux, I've used Linux exclusively for the last two years, I'm pretty used to being able to do things my own way. But luckily, macOS doesn't really make it that difficult to kind of tweak the settings. And also with these couple of plugins that we're going to be talking about, it definitely changes the experience a little bit, makes it more of a livable space. That's really subjective, and it depends on if you're a masochist or not, because it's just some things in macOS don't make sense. Kind of. What we're going to be looking at today is a plugin called Yabai. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. And what Yabai is, is a tiling window management system. It's pretty much just an extension that you can put over Mac OS, which will give you like a tiling window environment. If you've ever used Linux or you've used GNOME, and if you know what the pop shell is like, that's what this is like. It's very similar to the pop shell. There's a handful of different extensions out there, but from what I've gathered, Yabai seems to be like the most popular and the most uh, feature rich, I guess. But again, this is why I said it was like kind of possible because it's not like we're installing a standalone window manager or anything on here. I don't even know if that's possible on these new, like the M1, the M2, the silicone MacBooks. I don't know if it's possible to install a standalone window manager. I know you can do it on like the old Intel MacBooks. And actually, that reminds me, I have one of those really old Intel MacBooks up in my closet. So maybe in another video, we could try to uh, throw Qtile or something on that. Because of this, so we're going to check out Yabai, this window management system, basically just like the Pop Shell, which if you don't know, the Pop Shell is an extension that is created by uh, System76, which is the company behind the Linux distribution Pop OS. My first Linux distribution actually back in the day. We're going to get more into that, of course, but yeah, I mean, I would say it's not bad. It's not, it's not a standalone window manager, of course, but if you know what the pop shell is, I'm going to reference that a few times in this video, of course, because it's so similar to that, except for I do think it might be a little bit more powerful than the pop shell. It does what it's supposed to do. Is it better than window managers on Linux? I think you already saw my answer before. That is a definite no, um, just hands down. And that's not even what this video is about. It's not a comparison between Linux and Mac OS, or it's not a competition or anything like that. Look, I love Linux, but I also love tech. And I just, how I look at these things is they're just tools to accomplish a job. And if I can use a tool that is better fitted for the job that I am doing, I'm going to use that tool. That just, that's, that's my mindset. 
I know that Linux and the FOSS community has the whole ideology that Apple and Google are evil, and yeah, they are, but whatever. They've already got your data. Just fucking sucking you dry of your data. That's just what they do. It is the world that we live in. Enough of all this rambling. Let's pull up the uh, screen and check out Yabai and Mac OS. And I'm just going to give my first impressions kind of on Mac OS as well, but I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of the things that I dislike, uh, like Finder. What the fuck is that? Give me a real file manager, whatever. Let's pull up the screen and uh, see what we're getting ourselves into. Hey guys, this is Future Blake here from the editor's chair. I just wanted to let you know that in the next segment, you're going to see black borders on the left and right of the screen. That's just because I had a setting wrong in OBS. I figured it out after the fact, um, and I just didn't have time to re-record it. So I'm just letting you know it's not going to be there in the future. All right, let's get back to the video. So at first glance, this shit is very reminiscent of GNOME. I'm going to throw up a screenshot of my Arch Linux system, which is running GNOME in the pop shell. I'll throw that up here now. And you can see that it's very similar to the Mac OS desktop. Obviously, I've set the same wallpaper. I just kind of wanted the most streamlined environment that I could get, right? So that's why I chose to switch over to GNOME from a standalone window manager. And I'll be honest, like it's, it's not seamless between the two devices. But they really, they're not bad. They work pretty well together, which I'm happy about. Now, I would say that, like, the workflow out of the box on Mac OS is nothing like my workflow on GNOME. But that's just because I've tweaked the fuck out of GNOME as well. I don't even really like the default workflow of the GNOME desktop environment. I just, I just want to do things my own way. Obviously, it's not hard at all to change the workflow on GNOME or any other Linux desktop environment. It's not impossible on macOS, but it's not the same. There's actually a handful of uh, similarities between macOS and GNOME. If you can see here, if I take my three fingers and swipe up on the trackpad, there's this little overview mode. It shows you any application that you have open. It pulls up your dock. Obviously the dock by default is always on, but I turn that off and I set it to hidden just because of screen real estate and everything. This MacBook is not big at all. It's 13 and a half, some, between 13 and 14 inches. So it's not big. My Dell laptop's actually a little bit bigger than this. But as you can see, there's this overview mode, which is very nice. And I didn't know this, and I was actually very worried. As you can see up here, I've got 10 different workspaces, or desktops is what they're called here. I thought I was going to have to work on one virtual screen. And I'm telling you, if you've never used workspaces, then yeah, you don't know what you're missing, but also you don't know how bad you have it, <laughs> if I'm being honest. The ability to have multiple virtual desktops or workspaces, whatever you want to call them, is pivotal. Once you start using them, I really, there's like no way to go backwards. It's just, it's very difficult. So I was very happy when I found that out because before this MacBook, I have an old little Intel MacBook that I got from a family member. I don't ever really use it. I'm not very knowledgeable when it comes to Mac OS yet. So I didn't know that you could uh, set up different workspaces and whatnot. So I was a little worried about that when I first set this computer up, but luckily I had nothing to fear. For my terminal emulator, I've got Kitty. The default terminal emulator on Mac OS is not bad, it's really not, but I tried to get Alacrity. The homebrew package isn't updated or something like that, so it won't work. Kitty does though. I've used Kitty a little bit on Linux, not really, because I use Alacrity on Linux, but whatever. I mean, it does what I need it to do. Marta is a file manager. It's a GUI file manager. You don't get a file manager on Mac OS. You have this thing called Finder, and it's just, I don't even want to talk about it. It is not a file manager. I mean, it is technically. It's not just like a normal GUI file manager, and I just... I don't know. Just give me a regular fucking file manager so I can open it up, I can see my home folder. Other than that, I got Firefox, of course, Malvad, VPN, OBS, DaVinci, Audacity, so those kind of things. So this is, of course, Yabai. This is the GitHub page. You can easily install it with Homebrew. And once you do, you're going to, in a terminal, you're going to run Yabai dash dash start dash service hit enter and that will actually start you by. I'm obviously not gonna do that because it's already started. This is actually the part that I thought was kind of cool about you by. If we go into the .config directory, 
we can see that I have a Yabai directory right here. We can go into there, and we've got a config file. So let's end them into that real quick. It's a very small configuration file, but what it does is you can set your layout. There's either BSP or stack. BSP is going to give you like a dwindling layout, which I don't like, but I never open up more than usually two windows. At most is three, I never go over three. And you can see if I open up two other windows, it gives me like a master stack layout, or at least close enough to a master stack layout. But once I start opening more, you can see it does that little dwindling thing. And But it doesn't matter. Who needs four fucking windows open on a screen at once? Usually I'm right here. I've just got two windows open, so it doesn't bother me. This second line here just tells you, you know, the placement of your new window. You can set padding. I just have it to six pixels. I think that's n that's not really a bad. I might drop it down uh, a little bit just because the screen real estate on this MacBook is not a lot. So I might even drop it down to like two or three. But then you just got like click and drag kind of things. And then also down here, you can disable specific applications. Like I've got system settings and calculator. So my config file for this is just verbatim from this tutorial that I followed which I will link down in the description if you want to check it out so my config files basically just copy and paste from his until I kind of like until I get a you know a better handle on things and whatnot that's pretty much it that's the config file for you buy RC now there is another plugin or extension called skhd and here's the github page for that and if you are a Linux user and you use window managers that might kind of sound familiar to you because there is a package called SXHKD on Linux. And with that, you can set hotkeys, you know, shortcuts and everything for applications. SKHD isn't for applications. Like you can't set a key binding to open up Firefox or your terminal. Here, let's open up the uh, config file real quick. What this is going to do is it lets you set key bindings for like window focusing, swapping windows, things like that, which is very, very helpful. And this could just be because my uh, my experience with macOS is very limited so far. The key binding shortcuts, hotkeys, whatever you want to call them, they're kind of a fucking mess on macOS. And I'm not I'm not going to lie. They just they just are. They're not that great. At least if you're coming from Linux, right? Because the hotkeys and shortcuts, global shortcuts on Linux are very, very good. And coming to an operating system where they're just not, they're just not as straightforward. So this right here, SKHD, lets you set certain uh, key bindings to swap windows and whatnot. Like the first one I have here, change window focus, so that's super easy. Let's open up a couple of uh, more terminals. Just hit Command H, and that's gonna focus the left window, right? L is gonna go to the right, K is gonna go up, J is gonna go down. So if you're familiar with Vim or NeoVim and the Vim key bindings, that's going to be very familiar to you, right? So command, I'm just going to say super from now on. The command key on a MacBook is the super key. The, there's an option key as well, which is actually the alt key. On my Linux system, the super key is on the left and then the alt key is on the right of the super key. On a MacBook, the super key is on the right and the alt key is on the left. There, It's a learning curve, I will tell you that. But of course, then you can see here, I don't use these uh, key bindings all that much, like the rotating on the Y axis, X axis. Okay, let's open up a few more, right? Uh, and if I do, if I do shift alt R, that's gonna rotate everything at 270 degrees which is kind of helpful. I mean, I don't really use anything like that. Like I said, I just copied somebody else's config verbatim. Um, so I don't really use those, but I do use, this is a good one, Command-Shift-M is going to maximize the full window, whatever window you have focused. It's kind of weird, so like on Linux, they have, like for swapping windows, right, they use south, north, west, and east instead of left, right, top, and bottom. So that's just a little bit different. If I do something like Super Shift H, that's gonna swap the two windows, right? Whatever focused window it's going to swap, I can do Super Shift L again and it'll swap over there. Super Shift J, that's gonna swap those. I can go up here, Command K to focus the, to focus the terminal that has the configuration file open. And then 
super shift H to bring it back. And then also uh, move windows to workspace. This is very, very helpful, right? So super shift one, actually we're on the first, no, we're on the third desktop right now, so cool. So if I take this, right, I have this window focused, I do super shift one, that's going to actually shoot that window over to the first workspace. So we can go over to the first workspace and of course it is there with Firefox. So I have that set up just like on Linux, right? So Super Shift 1 through 0 is going to take the focus window and put it on whatever workspace you chose. And then I've also got Super 1 through 0 will just shoot me to any of the um, different workspaces, right? So like that's this is 1, Super 2, Super 3. Then I've got these down at the bottom. They're just a couple of key bindings to start and stop the Yabai service. I don't usually ever stop it, but in case something happens, like if it crashes or something, you can have a quick little key binding to start or restart Yabai, which I've never really ran. I haven't ran into anything like any hiccups. It doesn't really lag. You know, it's a pretty straightforward system. It works as intended. Like I said, it is not a standalone window manager. It's not even close to a standalone window manager. It is very similar to the Pop Shell. All right, everybody. Well, that was the video. It was a look at Mac OS. You buy kind of turning Mac OS into a tiling window manager. Not a standalone window manager, of course, but again, it's just very reminiscent of the Pop Shell. I really don't mind it. Yabai and SKHD definitely make this a livable space for me, at least while I'll be editing videos and things like that. Yeah, that was a look at Yabai and SKHD. I hope you really liked the video. If you made it this far, first of all, thank you so much. That really means a lot to me. If you did like the video, consider hitting that like button because it really does help out the channel way more than you know. Also, consider subscribing if you haven't already because we have a bunch more content coming your way.